Welcome back to Crypto Me TI. Jerry here with an update for you. Do me a favor, friends. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and comment down below. Now let's get into this. Google's new quantum computing just put a countdown on every blockchain. Crypto is an added existential threat. If you hold BTC and ETH, this threat is for you. Only a few blockchains are built for post-quantum era. Here's who's ready and who isn't. What is happening? Google just unveiled its new quantum computing power that is 13,000 times faster than the best supercomputer in the world. Quantum computers aren't just science fiction anymore. Google, IBM, and China's CAS have already achieved quantum advantage. The crypto would collapse on itself. Blockchain security lay on two main cryptographic tools, SHA-256, a hashing algorithm that secures block data and mining processes, notably in Bitcoin. ECDSA, the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm that authenticates wallet transactions across nearly all major networks. Shor's algorithm, it's the ultimate quantum decryption tool, capable of dismantling ECDSA, the cryptographic system protecting your private keys in seconds if sufficient quantum power exists. That's the looming threat to every traditional blockchain. In Bitcoin, for example, any wallet that has made a transaction equals exposed. Once you send funds, your private key is on-chain. A quantum computer can derive your private key from it. There are over 1.9 million BTC sitting in exposed addresses. Which cryptos are post-quantum ready? Since the SHA-256 and the ECDSA will easily be hacked through quantum computing. The one of the few cryptographic tools for post-quantum era is ED25519. That's Quantum Computers Kryptonite. XRP uses ECDSA, but also supports ED25519, which makes it flexible to adopt post-quantum era. XLM uses ED25519 for all signatures, making it more modern and efficient. HBAR uses ED25519 signatures and is actively researching quantum resilient algorithms for future network upgrades. Now here's the big one, my friend. Friends, Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't exactly agile. To make them quantum secure, they would need a major fork, hard or soft. Consensus across the global developer base, mass wallet upgrades. That's a monumental challenge for any decentralized network. The ticking clock. Experts estimate we could reach that point in five to 10 years. This isn't a crypto issue. It's a national security issue. Ripple and Stellar have been quietly partnering with central banks and ISO 222 institutions, the very entities already preparing for post-quantum systems. Quantum computers to break Bitcoin by 2024 to 2029. Those Bitcoin maxis better get ready. The future of crypto. Why do you think major financial infrastructures, SWIFT, BIS, ECB, are testing DLT systems like RippleNet, Hedera, and Stellar? Because they know what happens when quantum hits. The next financial reset won't come from regulation. It will come from physics. The post-quantum alliance. When quantum computing rewrites cryptography, only adaptive systems survive. DNA on-chain and Vision ZK-proof infrastructure might become the translator between classical and quantum secure networks. Quantum computing will break some chains and bless others. When the reset comes, those only prepared for it will hold real value. The survivors are already building in silence, and their ledgers glow XRP blue, HBAR black, and Stellar silver. If you found this information valuable or helpful, please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. And this is a massive win for crypto. Pro XRP XRP lawyer Mike Selig just nominated by President Trump as a CFTC chairman from battling the SEC over XRP's non-security status to leading U.S.'s commodity regulations. Expect a golden age for innovation, free markets, and making America the crypto capital. Let's F and go. Here's the reality, people. Interoperability is the ultimate factor of the great wealth transfer. All blockchain protocols must work together. Multi-chain, multi-token system. I keep on saying it. This is the end of the correspondent banking system in real time. End game right here before your eyes. Because here's the reality. In the future, there will be more ways to move value, not fewer. And consumers will demand more choices, not less. And that's where our innovation track comes in. To provide more choices to the industry. So the past uh, couple of years, We've shown that SWIFT can be used to transfer tokenized value across public and private blockchains and interlink CBDCs globally. With SWIFT as a single window providing end-to-end -end tracking, transparency, and trust across transactions, regardless of the forms they take, the networks they use, or how they settle. So we'll continue to provide interconnectivity between DLT and existing TN systems to reduce fragmentation, as well as to uh, you know, keep the world interoperable. But we're going to go further in 24-7 international payments. Today, I'm very pleased to announce that we will add a blockchain-based ledger to our technology infrastructure to allow for trusted movement of tokenized value across the digital ecosystems. You know, and you may wonder, wow, and those opposites, SWIFT and blockchain, 
TradFi and DeFi, can they really go together? Well, in the regulated system in the future, we believe they can. Interoperability is going to make everything run so much smoother, faster, cheaper, and much more efficient. It's funny how they call Ripple and XRP a scam while the EU builds the next generation of finance on it. Ripple and XRP is embedding itself into Europe's financial transformation. What looks like just another blockchain project is actually building the pipes for real-world cross-border money movement. And guess what? It's not priced in. XRP is becoming the digital lubricant for an entire continent's financial rails. Comment down below, share, like, subscribe if you believe XRP is bigger than most realize. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Hong, best career advice, passion isn't enough. You got to endure. There's a phrase that said you should, you should choose uh, your career based on your passion. Usually people connect passion with happiness. Uh, I think there's something missing in that. You want to build something, something great. It's not easy to do. And when you're doing something that's not easy to do, you're not always enjoying it. I don't love every day of my job. I don't think every day brings me joy, nor does joy have to be the definition of a good day. And so I think that, that what people misunderstand is, is somehow the best jobs are the one that brings you happiness all the time. I, I don't think that that's right. You have to suffer. You have to struggle. You have to endeavor. You have to do those hard things and work through it in order to really appreciate what you've done. And there are no such thing that are great that was easy to do. I can get behind that 100%. Things that come easy, go easy. Things that come hard and you have to really fight for, last forever. BlockFi co-founder Zach Prince on the recent crypto market dump. This was a buying opportunity. And I agree 100% with that. It was a definitely a buying opportunity. As long as you were not using leverage, you were just fine. If you use leverage, you probably got wiped out to folks who are uh, more adept at that than I am, including Mike Novogratz, the CEO of Galaxy Digital. But what I would say is what we saw on our platform at Galaxy One, which just launched a week ago, is that this was a buying opportunity. Uh, crypto is a, is a volatile asset class, as folks know. We support Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana on our platform currently. So there was definitely a dip there. But uh, the activity that we saw was that folks were using it as an opportunity to add to their positions. There were three exchanges responsible for the bulk of the $19 billion in liquidated leverage bets wiped out by late Friday. Um, the lion's share were on hyperliquid. There was about $4.6 billion on Bybit and about $2.4 billion on uh, Binance. So there's a little bit of irony here, I guess, uh, Zach, in that a lot of the trading activity in decentralized finance, crypto, was so concentrated, centralized on, on a few, a handful of platforms. What do you think of that? I think that you're going to continue to see an evolution in the crypto market. There's always these moments in time where uh, folks kind of realize there are things in traditional finance that might be valuable. For example, circuit breakers, or y'all were just touching on uh, the ability to, you know, give clients the opportunity to post more margin before auto liquidating them. And so I think folks have to be really thoughtful about which platforms they choose to trade on. I think they have to be thoughtful about how they're using leverage, if they are using leverage at all. And I think that the space that we're heading into with uh, Galaxy One is more targeted towards a mass affluent investor. And as a result, we're going to be a lot less focused on anything that would fall into the category of super high leverage or kind of casino-esque casino uh, type trading. And, and that's what I recommend to my friends and family that are participating in the crypto market as well. There's one thing you need to know. If you're using leverage on any of these exchanges like Bitunex, Mexi, or whatever, Binance, the Hyperliquid, whatever, if you're using leverage, you are in a casino. Do not forget that. You're in a casino. Treat it as such. Well, that's what I have for you folks. Until next time, stay savvy, stay stacking, and I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and comment down below. And if you want more crypto deep dives, check out our videos right here on Crypto Meets AI. Thank you for watching. Remember to always do your own research. This is not financial advice.